I'm going to be going over a paper called Why Bends Bend But Don't Break that has both good news and bad news in regards to microfracture theory of growing taller. Um, so here, it's by David Burr, who is a very promising bone scientist. So this guy knows what he's talking about. Bone can adapt by altering its geometry, providing the strongest structure possible with a minimum amount of material. Now, the thing is that this paper is referring mostly to about trabecular bone and not cortical bone. So theoretically, Dave Burr could be referring to trabeculi altering its geometry and not necessarily the cortical bone. But here I, I wanted to go over this, and it's because this, this, this image right here basically proves that going tall is possible. Because it says that if you pass this yellow strain, you can permanently change the shape of the bone, plastic deformation. So, so this, this, this graphs like this show that it's 100% possible to grow taller if you can get in that plastic deformation main. The challenge is getting in that plastic deformation main for the cortical bone um, in order to grow taller. Um, and there, there's other methods too. So, so the, the fluid flow method that I'm, we're tr I'm experimenting with is all in the elastic modulus range. Um, and it says basically that the fluid flow exerts this, these forces that can alter the bone shape and size without getting in the plastic deformation range. Um, here, David Burr explains the different types of micro damage. There are at least three distinct types of micro damage, which we identified as linear microfrax, diffuse micro damage, and microfractures. Linear microfrax represent planes of separation within the bone tissue. They tend to form preferentially in response to compressive stress, and they're indicative of bone tissue that deforms more before it cracks. So again, plastic deformation. Um, the issue is getting that plastic deformation in the cortical bone. Um, here, diffuse microdamage consists of collections with numerous small cracks, each less than 10 micrometers wide and of unknown length. They tend to form in areas under tensile stress and can be best viewed under a microscope. Now here, microfractures, this is the one um, that's cited as a possible way to go tall. Microfractures, on the other hand, are entirely different from than these forms of damage. My, microfractures can occur within cancellous bone, which is, refers to the spongy trabecular bone within the cortical bone, and represent complete fractures of one or more trabeculi. Now, obviously, it, it's harder to get a complete fracture than it is an incomplete fracture. Lo logically, you'd think you'd get some um, complete and incomplete. So that would make it much harder because you'd have to get both, you'd have to get, a, have a lot of fractures to guarantee getting a sufficient number of complete fractures. Um, micro fractures, on the other hand, are repaired through normal fracture healing mechanisms, which involve endochondral ossification. This is an exciting sentence because it, it, it means you wouldn't need to stretch the micro fractures. Because endochondral ossification, like you see with the growth rate, you don't need to stretch your growth rate, the growth rate just grows. So um, endochondral ossification um, is capable of interstitial growth, which is growth from within. So you wouldn't need to stretch the microfractures. If, if uh, something heals from endochondral ossification, it can grow longer without any stretching or anything like that. Um, here you can see pictures that basically prove um, the endochondral ossification. You can see it right here. Um, again, the, the issue is um, that there's trabecular bone and cortical bone. So the issue is that even if trabecular bone can heal this way and you could gradually grow taller by causing microfractures in, in each trabecula and each trabecula could grow longer and longer over time, the issue is that how do you get that to happen with the cortical bone? Because this process, the micro, again, the microfracture has to be complete and cortical bone is so thick that how do you get that complete microfracture within the cortical bone unless it's an actual fracture? Um, here you can see the various types of microcracks. These could cause um, deformation of the bone gradually over time. Um, micro damage, so this is basically an, an incomplete fracture. It doesn't heal by endochondral ossification, but it could still gradually deform the bone over time. Um, so these would be less, more slow ways of potentially growing taller, but they, it would take a long time. This defines the different types. Microfracture is a complete fracture, bending, shear, um, trabecular, um, and he it repairs endochondral ossification. That, that uh, those two sentences, words alone are very promising. 
um, these other things, a few micro damage, let me micro cracks, mostly tin cell compressive. But you see here the strain mode, bending shear. So this this means that, you know, I'm always talking about torsional load, and torsional loading it causes a lot of bending and shear forces. So this would be a, the best way to cause micro fractures. And if micro fractures could indeed get you taller, um, then, you know, you want the best way to cause micro fractures, which I, I still believe is um, the torsional loading. Um, and, and torsional loading would also cause compressive and tensile strain too. Um, yeah, so so we have that cortical load. But again, going to this graph, theoretically, if you ch gradually change the shape, the internal trabecular shape of the bone, it's going to put stress on the cortical bone. So maybe over time, you can gradually get into that yield range. So maybe the trabecular could be so altered that the cortical bone would have to adapt and possibly grow longer or something like that. But I, I basically have to test or prove that theory. Um, so that's why I'm trying other theories. Um, but another thing is that the epiphysis does not have as thick a layer as the diaphysis in terms of the cortical bone. So the, there's the, the cortical bone problem is not as much of an issue for the epiphysis. So uh, th theoretically, you'd want to cause more of the microfractures in the epiphysis. So that's why I say, again, that there's, good, there's good news and bad news. So the good news is this paper and images like this basically prove that the, if the bone was 100% trabeculi, it would be 100% possible to grow taller with a microfracture. The problem is the bone is not 100% trabeculi. There's also cortical bone. Um, this paper has a lot of stuff in it. Um, I recommend it if you want to learn about bone, especially since David Burr is kind of the, the bone expert. Um, lots of good images here. Um, um, Dave Burr has a lot, done a lot of studies on dogs and microfractures and stuff like that. Um, when a bone, oh, I wanted to bring, when a bone is bent, one surface is subject to compression and the opposite surface to tension. So it, it's hard to uniformly provide tensile strain on the bone. So that that's the problem with plastic deformation. When you're, you, when you're compressed, you'd have to find a way to provide uniform tensile strain on the bone, which is challenging and, and probably we would need some kind of device. Um, but that's what's exciting about endochondral ossification is that, you know, it, it grows from within, so it could increase the length without needing to be a specific force or direction. Bone damage can be initiated more easily at lower strains by tensile forces than by compressive forces. Um, you see that bone does not really undergo a lot of the tensile forces. Um, in studies, uh, they tend to use bending to get tensile forces. So people mention the rack, but the problem is that I've said before is that the rack provide, puts a lot of load on the ligaments or the endothesis, which attaches to the bone. Um, so not so much on the bone itself. So you would want to find exercises that actually provide tensile strain on the bone. And if you could theoretically get in that plastic deformation range for the cortical bone, then you could grow taller. Um, and again, it would be easier to get that range in the epiphysis because it has a smaller layer of cortical bone. And you could see that the trabecular bone is much easier to, to get to adapt than the cortical bone. The nature of micro damage tends to be far more damaging linear microcrass than less mechanically severe diffuse damage. But we can see by the images that we want those microfractures. The microfractures are what could potentially grow taller, but um, I think it would be possible to grow, to grow taller by those other cracks. It would just take more time. So more stuff here. Yeah, again, in conclusion, the good news is that if you, if the bone was entirely trabeculi, if the bone was entirely trabeculi, it would be possible to grow taller via the microfracture method. The problem is the bone is not entirely trabeculi. There's also cortical bone. So that's the question of what we have to deal with. So that's why I'm looking at other methods um, again. But, you know, this is promising. This is promising. 
And, you know, maybe that there'd be some way to exploit this phenomenon within the bone to grow taller without actually having to fracture the trabeculi as has to be done in um, distraction osteogenesis or limb magnetic surgery.